creating content for your website. In this section, we're going to cover the importance of content in SEO. So I'm going to show you exactly how Google reads your content and how it uses it when ranking sites in Google. We're going to cover the two types of content you should have on your website. In fact, two types of content that every website should have. I'm going to show you how to come up with new content ideas every single month, how to make your content engaging and avoid being dull and tedious. Because what will happen if you have dull and boring content on your website, people actually land on your website, read it, get bored and actually go back to the search results and find another website. I'm going to show you how to ensure your content conveys trust. This is super important as if your content doesn't convey trust, you won't actually convince the user that you can deliver on what you say. And as a result, they'll just go and find another local business. And lastly, I'm going to show you the importance of fresh content and why you should be updating your blog at least once a month. The importance of content in SEO. Whenever you're crafting some content for your website, always ask yourself, what value does this content provide to the user? Google's main goal is to provide useful and relevant results to the user. As a result, Google's algorithm analyzes millions of search results and it returns the websites it believes answer the search query the best. For example, if someone searches for carpet fit of Richmond, Google is going to return websites that are talking about carpet fitting services in Richmond. Naturally, there would be quite a few websites talking about this, as there's obviously multiple carpet fitting companies in Richmond. However, if your website is one of the ones that has extremely high content with no spelling errors, perfect grammar, and your content is formatted correctly, then it's more likely Google will return your site to the user, aka high rankings. However, if your content is subpar, Google will not return your site to the user, aka low rankings. So you really need high quality content to stand out. The two types of content you should have on your website. The first type is what we call informational content. So this is content that primarily provides information to the user. Some examples of informational content would be a blog post, such as an industry related update. You could have FAQs, you could have reviews and testimonials and so on. The other type of content is what we call service related content. So this is content talking about the services you provide and the products you sell. Typically, the service related content is what makes up your generic service pages on your website. I highly recommend you cover both elements, both informational and both service related content on your website, as I've seen it multiple times in the past, where a website will have tons of service related pages, no informational content at all, and they literally can't get onto page one. I guess it's a case where Google potentially view the site as it's just selling with little value to the user due to the fact there's no informational content on the site. So as a result, Google will never rank the site on page one. You know, however, as soon as we come in and then add some informational content to the site, the site then skyrockets and jumps on page one straight away. So I've seen it so many times, it is super, super powerful. You know, you wanna make sure you have both your service related content and your informational content on your site. When it comes to producing content for your website, the first place you should start is to produce service related content. So this is content related to a service you offer. So typically these type of contents will be informational type of uh, posts on your website. So as a result, they will come under your blog. So for example, for level finish, if I go to my services, you can see we offer hardwood, carpet, laminate, tile, and vinyl. So these are all types of floorings we install. However, each service, I can produce content around it. So for hardwood flooring, I could have a brainstorm and come up with ideas such as how much is hardwood flooring? What are the pros and cons of hardwood flooring? When should you pick hardwood flooring over laminate uh, flooring, for example? For carpet, you could have how to clean your carpet. What are the best products to clean your carpet with? Is carpet good for people with allergies? So as you can see, these are all ideas and content related around the services I offer. So for example, if you're a plumber and you have a service such as sink unblocking, that would be your main obviously service page. You could have an article talking about how to keep your sink free from blockages, for example, and just educate people, really build trust with the user. So once you do that, you actually be surprised because when you compile a list of all the services you offer and all the content you actually craft around the service, you'll have a massive list and tons of content to upload. Once you've done that, the second thing you can move on to is what we call locational content. So this is content which is typically crafted around the location you are servicing. So for me, it would be Richmond, Virginia. To get loads of ideas about this, you simply go over to Google and you would Google something like uh, things to do in Richmond, Virginia. And what this will do, Google will actually return a little section like this, top things to do in Richmond. You can actually click uh, more things to do here and expand to get some more ideas. So uh, do bear in mind, when you end up writing about things to do in Richmond, Virginia, it's not gonna help people buy your products and services, but what it does do, it has an SEO uh, benefit in the background. So to rank on page one of Google, you need to have what we call a geographical relevance. So geo relevance 
essentially it's just letting Google know you are actually based in that city. So when you end up writing about things uh, like this, so for example, Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, if you keep writing about things to do within Virginia, it's gonna become apparent to Google after a certain amount of time that you are actually based in Virginia. And as a result, you're gonna be more likely to appear for keywords and things to do in regards to Richmond, such as carpet installation, Richmond, Virginia, for example. So these type of articles, like I said, uh, they're not gonna attract customers. However, what they're gonna do is they're gonna push you up higher in Google in the back end. I'm actually gonna talk about this in a lot more detail uh, on the on-page SEO section. However, for now, I just wanna make you aware you can actually write about things like this as well. So you can see straight away, I've got three right there, six, nine, 12. I've got 12 ideas. I click the button here and even get more and more ideas. However, just do bear in mind, you would be writing about things like landmarks and sites that are more local to your city. You don't wanna to go too far out and you can actually confuse Google to where you are actually based. So this is two really good uh, spots where you should start off with. So it's gonna be your service related content and then it's gonna be what we call uh, your geo related content. So content based on your location and your geographical area. Another thing which you can do to come up with tons of content ideas is to look at the websites you are competing with, visit their blogs and then see what they are writing about. This will give you the opportunity to then review the blog and see if you want to include any of the stuff they wrote about on your website too. There's a very simple process. Uh, you want to go up to Google and simply Google something like Floor Insulation Companies Virginia, obviously for my example, uh, for level finish. You'll see how I've gone a bit broader as well. I've put in Virginia and just not Richmond. As these companies, they don't need to be local to me. All I want to do is find a similar business that does what I do. So it installs floors and I want to check out their blogs. So I've just Googled that now. Let's scroll down and find a local business. I've got one here, uh, Absolute Flooring RVA. And I'm pretty sure I went past one. I've got K&K Hardwood. Let's look at uh, these guys too. So once the website loads, you want to find the blogs and literally see what they're writing about. So they actually don't have an option for the blog up here. Oh, it's under the About page, which is a little bit uh, interesting. So let's go on our blog. And you'll see these are all posts of things they've wrote about. So is it time to refinish your floors? We've got, is it time to replace your hardwood floors? New hardwood floors will raise home value. So again, talking about how flooring could potentially increase the value of your home. So these are all really good blog ideas I can then write about on my site if I haven't already covered them. If you go to page two to get some more ideas. So I've already got two ideas already. Various types of woodcuts, that's a pretty good article. So that's the third idea about hardwood floor insulation. So it's a bit generic. Potentially, again, I could write about that. I've got solid versus engineered hardwood flooring. It's another good idea. So that's four now. And I've got helpful advice on hardwood flooring. So again, I've got about five ideas already just from checking out one website. If I check the other website, again, I don't seem to have a page for the blog. It might be under about again, which it is. So let's go to blog. It could be a certain trend in this industry to have your blog under your about page. You can see they actually only have one blog, which is a quick overview of hardwood flooring. So again, that's potentially six ideas I've got just for checking um, out a couple of websites. So do bear in mind, like I said, I've just typed in Virginia. There's no reason why I can't go to a different state as well. Like I mentioned, they don't need to be, oops, got that wrong. They don't need to be uh, based local to me. I just need to find other local businesses, check out the blogs and compile a list of blog ideas. So you can rinse and repeat this as many times as you want, looking at as many states, as many cities as you want. And I'm pretty sure uh, after five minutes of doing this, you'll have a massive list of potential blogs you can now post on your website. SEMrush also has a very good feature called Topic Research. What it allows you to do is to plug in a keyword and what it does, it returns tons of topics which it believes are relevant to what you typed in. So to access it, you just log into SEMrush and you go to Topic Research here on the left and you simply plug in your keyword. So as you can see, I've already done that and I plugged in a carpet ideas. It is advised to keep your keyword a little bit broad as well. Don't go and type in your full keyword as it won't bring back that many topics. So start broad and then narrow down. So as you can see for carpet ideas, I've got this whole topic here called eco-friendly. So if I want, I can click it and expand the whole box to give me more information. So you can see I've got a potential idea already. So 10 most popular eco-friendly flooring solutions. I've got eco-friendly flooring. So potentially I could add a blog to my website talking about eco-friendly flooring. And that'd be obviously under this topic. You can see you keep scrolling down and kind of find uh, what suits you. So for example, we've got this one right here. So a family room topic, if I give that a click, and wait for it to load, you can see I've got this article right here, how to choose the best carpet for a living room. So potentially people are searching for this every single month. So what I can do is write an article about that and then chuck it on my blog post on my website.
We can keep scrolling down to get more uh, and more ideas. Colored carpets, you're gonna have uh, carpet ideas for living rooms, traffic areas. So for example, carpet buying guide, how to choose carpets. So these are all ideas we potentially write about on our website and then satisfy our readers and our audience. So like I've just done this for carpet ideas, I can then rinse and repeat this for laminate, vinyl, hardwood, all the other services we offer. The great thing about this tool is if you like to learn, or if you prefer to learn things visually, you can actually click this part right here, which is the mind map. And what it will do, it will convert that into a more visual guide you can look at. So you can see for carpet ideas, I've got these keywords down here. And you can see uh, on the right hand side as well, I've got the headlines, which are obviously different ideas to write about as well. So it's a very, very good tool uh, indeed. Do have a play of it and do test different keywords. As like I said, different keywords will bring back different results. Another thing which you can do to come up with tons of content ideas is to subscribe to industry related blogs. So the beauty of this is once you subscribe for these blogs, what will happen is they'll send you an email every week or every month. It all depends on the frequency which you can set up in your account. But essentially you'll get emails coming in and there'll be information containing stuff about your industry. So it could be new products, new things you should be aware of, new legislations affecting your industry. And what this does, it gives you the opportunity to then go through these emails and cherry pick the ones you want to feature on your website. So essentially you have a massive inbound of ideas coming in of stuff you can feature on your website on autopilot and it doesn't require you to sit down and then think of, hey, what should I write about? And the good thing, finding these industry related blogs is actually very, very simple. All you need to do is do a simple search for, obviously I put flooring in because flooring is my industry. You want to replace flooring with obviously your industry you're operating in. So type in top industry blog. So for me, it'd be flooring. Once you've done that, Google will then return probably a few articles. So I've got this one right here, top 100 flooring blogs and websites to follow in 2020. I've got the top 10 UK flooring blogs. So I'll go for this one. It's updated six days ago and obviously it has a uh, way more than this website just here. So I'll click into this one and you'll see straight away this website listed out hundred different blogs I can follow. I can actually put my email in here and click continue and then subscribe to the newsletter. So what will happen, obviously I'll start getting emails from this website. I can go down and go for flooring.org type in my email again uh, how many you want to subscribe to depends on how much content you want to add to your website so once you do this you'll be getting tons of ideas to your inbox and then like i said you just go through your emails and see what these people are saying and then think about whether it's relevant to show your audience on your website or not when it comes to producing content for your website you want to make sure you have your focus on producing higher quality and unique content this is especially true if you operate in multiple locations as it can be very tempting to use the same content you use in location one and copy it over to location two and just swap out the location name. I'm going to show you the website doing this now and explain why you shouldn't be doing this. So this is the website um, I found, it's Essex Event Hire. So they provide photo booth uh, hire as a service. So this is the service uh, right here, this part of the title. And Romford is a the location they are targeting. And you can see I've got this introduction uh, text right here. They have the image uh, of five females in front of one of the photo booths, I assume. They've got this image of one of the photo booths down below at the bottom. If you read the first paragraph, you can see it says a photo booth hire has been an essential addition at weddings, parties and celebrations for many years. I actually found another page on the site targeting Bowsedon, which is a different town in the United Kingdom. You can see it's exactly the same uh, sentence. Photo booth hire has been an essential addition at weddings, parties and celebrations for many years. Again, exactly the same content. If we scroll down, we have the same image here. You've got the same image down there as well. In fact, if you actually flip between both tabs, you'll see literally nothing changes other than the location. I would not recommend you follow a strategy like this. It's actually against uh, Google Terms and Conditions and it comes under the category of duplicate content. You wanna take your time when you're crafting content for your locations, as this way you know you're gonna build a strong foundation. If you use the same content on every page and if you just swap out the location, what you're gonna have is a weak foundation and that is a kind of a no-go. You definitely wanna avoid that at all costs. As if you have a weak foundation, it makes your work so much harder later on down the line and you will struggle to see results. And do bear in mind, uh, just because you see a website on page one that is doing this, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean it works and it's fine to do. It just means that Google hasn't actually penalized them as of yet. So do take your time and get high quality and unique content on every location you operate in. One thing you wanna be wary of when you're producing content for your website is you wanna avoid having a massive wall of text. The reason being, uh, as you'll see from this example below, we have the image on the left, which is just copy and paste all of the text. As a result, it's a massive wall of text. An example of the right, they've actually taken the text and they've added like a heading there, another subheading. They formatted it, they've added some bullet points. They've got another heading, they've got an image, 
the image at the top. So you can see it's so much easier to view on the eye. And as a result, if I was to land on both of these websites, I am way much more likely to read the website on the right. If I actually landed on this example on the left, what I would do, I would actually go back to Google and find a different website because there's no way I would sit through here and read all of this, even though it's the same amount of information on the example on the right. Just visually, it looks way more intimidating and tedious to read. So it's very important you get this right because it's actually a metric uh, Google uses in the algorithm. It's called uh, dwell time. So essentially, the longer the person spends on your website, it's actually a good indication to Google that what you have on your website is good. So if you have a good dwell time number, what actually happens is Google puts your site higher up in Google. However, if you have a low dwell time, so people come on your site and they're bouncing straight back to Google and they're not spending a lot of time on that page, what happens is a clear signal to Google that, hey, this site isn't actually satisfying the user, which obviously Google's algorithm is all about, giving the user what they want to see. It's a sign to Google, it's not good. So as a result, it will put your site further back on Google. So page two, three, four, and even further depending how bad a dwell time is. So make sure you put a lot of effort into formatting your content correctly, getting the structure done, bullet points, images, and just make it engaging for someone to read. How to ensure your content conveys trust. One of the worst things that can happen is you spend tons of time optimizing your website in the background and working really hard to get to page one. And then when you get there, your phone doesn't ring. <laughs> one of the possible causes for something like this is having a website that conveys little to no trust. You really need to sell yourself online and build confidence in your potential customers and convince them as to why they should use you over another company, for example. There's multiple ways which you can do this. There's three which tend to work the best, which are reviews, case studies and photos of your recent work. These are all things which help build confidence and reassurance in potential customers. It's literally proof you're good at what you say you're good at and that you can actually deliver on your promises as well. Video testimonials also work very well. So if you have any, I highly recommend you get them added to your website. Reviews, for example, should only be added to your homepage and your most visited pages. And these are obviously the pages which are visited the most. So if you scroll down to the level finish homepage, you'll see we've got, don't take our word for it, check out what our customers had to say. And we've got these reviews pulling in, which should be uh, on a slider. So I think they update every three to five seconds, or maybe you have to slide it. Oh, it's just that way. So yeah, you can see I've got reviews in a homepage, just helps build more social proof. I wouldn't advise putting any reviews in your blog post, for example, as like I said earlier on in a section of this course, Blog posts should provide users with more informational content. So get this right and you'll have a solid foundation to build upon. You also want to have the other two elements ticked off as well. So that would be case studies and photos of your recent work. Now, depending on what industry you operate in, you might be able to combine both of these into one uh, form of social proof. So for example, for Level Finish, a flooring contracting site, we can actually combine our case study and photos of our recent work together. So we could actually go to someone's house. Let's say he wants the carpet installed. We could go there, take a picture of the current setup and the current carpet, rip the carpet up and then take another picture, which would be uh, the in progress picture, lay down the new carpet, get it all fitted, looking nice, and then take a picture of the final end product, speak to the customer and kind of get an idea of why they wanted this carpet, why they wanted carpet over hardwood floor, put it all together in a nice case study and then use that as promotional material as well. So you could actually use these case studies because they're super, super powerful. You could even go out uh, and get these printed on flyers before and after and then post them around people's address in your local area. Like I said, when you see things visually, it sells itself. So these few things combined are super, super powerful and definitely make sure you include them as part of your website. The importance of fresh content. Google's job is to serve up the best search results for people who are looking for information. Google wants the content that it serves up to be fresh and up to date, and that is typically the best type of content. There's actually a fresh content algorithm, and by adding it to your site, you can take advantage of it. I've tested it multiple times, and what I'm about to share is what I call the bare minimum. At least once per month, you need to increase the size of your website by one page. You can easily do this by adding a new blog post to your site once a month, for example, and by adding a new blog post to your site once a month, you are clearly demonstrating to Google that you care about your website whilst also satisfying the fresh content algorithm. One of the worst things you can do is create a website and then neglect it. This is actually what most local business owners do and is the main reason why most local businesses struggle to generate results online. It's because they made a site which really and truly just acts as a portfolio and other than that, that's really it. So as a result, no potential customers even find the website organically online it's typically a case of this local business owner meeting a potential client at a networking event, handing out a business card, and then saying, check out our work online. We want to avoid neglecting our sites, and by publishing one piece of content a month, we're going on the right tracks. Coming up with tons of blog ideas you can publish every month is nice and easy. 
you actually check out the video that I made on just that in this section in the course. You should also consider updating existing content once a month. This is a clear signal to Google, again, that you care about your content. And also out of your competition, your content will be the most freshest and up to date, which makes it a win-win. Just to clarify, uh, when I say update existing content, what I'm referring to is things such as adding a new sentence, removing a sentence, changing a picture, adding a video, for example. This is more than enough. And as I've already said, I've tested this multiple times and I haven't seen any additional benefit of adding maybe a whole paragraph or two paragraphs, for example. As long as you're updating the content, you're satisfying the fresh content segment of the algorithm, you're making Google happy. And you're also letting Google know your content is the most freshest and the most up-to-date out there.